everybody. Big shout out to all my Facebook peoples. I want to first of all say, go check out my final Kickstarter for my final KJ52 book and final album. Okay? It's kj52book.com if you don't know where to go. That is my final KJ52 album. I will continue to do music, but it's my final KJ52 album and final KJ52 book. I uh, wanted to hop on here and do a little... Uh, podcast for my podcast and get people's feedbacks. I'm actually stuck in line waiting to pick up my kids, so I got about 10 minutes or so. Uh, In 2019, we are having chicken wars. Full-blown Popeyes versus Chick-fil-A. There are people lined up for this Popeyes chicken sandwich. Uh, People are getting dragged out. Weaves are getting snatched. It's a dangerous place to be poultry. However, on the other side, we got my favorite spot, Chick-fil-A, of course, God's perfect chicken, the Lord's perfect chicken, where Christians are getting mad at Chick-fil-A now for ending their support uh, of what is called LGBT, anti-LGBTQIA, I know there's more letters, I'm not getting them all, um... Uh, organizations that believe in traditional marriage, man and woman. They do not support uh, gay marriage, so to speak. So uh, they said that Chick-fil-A stopped their support of FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, which, by the way, very close to my heart. One of the first things I ever did in ministry-wise was in FCA back in high school. Um, And that Chick-fil-A ended their support financially of Salvation Army. Both organizations have stated as a statement of faith, man and woman. Um, Anyway, I'm curious what your guys' thoughts are. Christians are now boycotting Chick-fil-A over this, or at least I've seen some degree of uh, Chick-fil-A blowback over them doing this. Uh, Some people are saying, oh, Chick-fil-A is caving in to the liberal, um, they're caving in to the liberal agenda And it's interesting also because there are times where I've seen in cities where Chick-fil-A is about to come in for the first time, and cities have tried to block Chick-fil-A. They've tried to block them, right? They've tried to block Chick-fil-A from coming in because, quote-unquote, Chick-fil-A is anti-gay, right? Um, These are all the different things that I've seen floating around on social media, in the media, I'm curious what your guys' thoughts. I'm going to share my thoughts in a second. I'm going to read some uh, comments that are here in the chat. And uh, I would love to hear what you think about this. And then I will I will uh, chime in on mine. Uh, so here we go. Let's look at what's going on here. Jason said, Chicken Wars. <laughs> He's laughing at that. Wouldn't that be a movie? Would that not be an amazing movie? Two chickens. Like literal, a literal chicken war. Like just a massive amount of chickens lined up. Maybe some of the chickens have stealth armor. Some of the chickens have shoulder rockets. I mean, would the chickens... Actually, how do the chickens even hold the guns? Would they just claw each other to death in the chicken wars? I'll get back to you on this. I do think chicken wars would either make a great video game or maybe a Netflix series. Either way, uh, back to what I was saying. These chicken wars are happening over this war. So, I was going to go ahead and say this, uh, but you guys have already beat me to the punch. Uh, that that Chick-fil-A is not necessarily... I mean, here's another thing I find interesting. This is a business that, obviously, in some aspects, they, they apply biblical principles. They're closed on Sunday. You know, that comes from honoring the Sabbath. I always thought it was funny that people traced this anti-gay stance back up to the very top because Truett Cathy had stated he believes in marriage between a man and a woman. So that makes all of Chick-fil-A anti-gay. I find this mind-blowing because the only way I could see Chick-fil-A was being anti-gay is if they have a policy that says, hey, if you're homosexual, you cannot work here, right? That would be an anti-gay statement, and that would obviously be wrong. Or if they say, we only serve heterosexual Christians, (laughs) right? Um, Anyway, you know, here's I just find this interesting, the amount of... uh, that grief Chick-fil-A gets as a entity because of what the founder might have said in an interview, right? Um, 
Just to the point where, like, I think, what was it? Like, they were trying to put a Chick-fil-A in, like, downtown Chicago, and the mayor was like, we will not stand for this anti-gay chicken. I mean, come on. That's not what's happening. You know what I mean? I get, I get that this makes a good soundbite, and I find it interesting, too, that, you know, someone's saying, well, the media is trying to make it look like Chick-fil-A is changing their stance, and all Chick-fil-A is doing is shifting, you know, what they're donating to, right? And that they wanted to have a focus on donating to charities that deal with the homeless. You know, and it's interesting because this is a very interesting um, dichotomy when it comes to the church, right? Sometimes people in the church go, we should not have any social justice. We should be about preaching the gospel. The gospel preaching is social justice, right? And then you have people that swing it to the other way and go, the church should be all about social justice, right? Meaning there's a lot of times in the church world where they want to make you pick one or the other, pick one lane or the other. I'm of the firm belief that it's both. That pure religion is this, to look after widows and orphans. That's social justice. You know what I mean? If you have one cloak, share with somebody else. That's social justice, right? It doesn't mean you do one and get rid of the other, or you just do one and you de-emphasize the other. I think it's doing all of it, right? Anyway, uh, which also brought something else to mind about Chick-fil-A that uh, I just want to say, I have not tried the Popeye's chicken sandwich. No, nor do I plan on trying the Popeye's chicken sandwich. Listen, I'm just going to be real with you guys. I spent a good portion of my life growing up in the hood, and almost every hood has a Popeye's or a church's, okay? I used to frequent these places as a kid with my dad. It has soured me on Popeye's chicken. I'm sorry. Just, you can't even compare the service of the two places, right? Now, I've been to a Popeye's in the, in the, in the, in the uh, I've been to a Popeye's in the airport. And it's got that Louisiana vibe. That's cool. I'm sorry. I just think Chick-fil-A has better service. They have cleaner places. And the food tastes better. That's just my personal preference. If you stack the two up against each other, you know, and I could be wrong. Maybe I do need to go check out the Popeye's chicken sandwich. It has nothing to do with anything. It's just the fact I just, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not running out there and fighting 300 people for a chicken, chicken sandwich. I'm good, okay? Anyway, I was, I was thinking about all this. I grabbed some more of your comments in just a second, a second here, but um, as I was thinking about this th today, and I was thinking about food and church and people's convictions about food and church, and I thought, there's no biblical parallel this in scripture. Paul is not talking about any of this or food or church. And then I thought, wait a minute. Holy Spirit hit me like that. And what he told me was, if you go read Corinthians, there is a story about Paul writing to the Corinthians church. And he's talking about this issue of Corinthians in the church struggling whether or not they were going to eat meat sacrificed to idols. So to give you a little backstory. Uh, the Corinthian church was in the Roman Empire, um, and it was a very, you know, morally loose kind of town. Very maybe maybe you could equivalent it to equivalent 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 it to Vegas. You know what happens in Corinth stays in Corinth, right? Anyway, Paul writes to the Corinthians, and he says, "Look, there's some of you guys that are upset with other people because you go and you get meat from the temple." And had been sacrificed to idols, and that makes them feel like, you know, they used to be in the in the idol temple, and because they were in the idol temple, that uh, that represents their old life when they used to worship, you know, false gods, and they don't want to even go near the market to get some of the meat. If you don't understand how this worked, they would sacrifice an animal to the false gods, and once it was sacrificed, they'd keep some of the animal, and then they would turn around and sell it, make a profit. So you can imagine young Christians walking around the market and going, y'all, let's go get something to eat. And the other guy's like, man, they sacrificed that to a demon or to a false god. I'm not going to eat there. And the other guy's like, dude, it's just chicken, man. Let's get down. Let's, let's eat. And the other guy's like, nah, that's, that's defiled, satanic chicken. And the other guy's like, no, man, anything dedicated to the Lord is now his. So let's eat the Jesus chicken. And the other guy's like, no. And they're busy fighting over here. Does that not sound like anybody right now? You tell me. 
This just shows me that for thousands of years, we've been Christians have been fighting about food. We'll pick anything to have a fight about it. Let me grab some uh, comments on here. Um, bow, 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 bow. Do, 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 do. I'm looking at other commentaries about the Lord's perfect chicken. Let's see here. Chicken wars are ridiculous. Somebody said the chicken wars are ridiculous. Uh, anyway. <laughs> so it's interesting what Paul says to the Corinthian church. What he actually says, he's saying, what's an idol? He's like, it's just, it's just, a, it's just a piece of wood. He goes, so if this meat is sacrificed to it, he's like, eat up. But he also goes on to say that if I find this super interesting to me because essentially what Paul is saying, if you're young in the faith, everything has these very, very, you know, very defined lines of black and white. There is no shades of gray, right? Paul's saying as you grow in Christ, you'll start to understand that maybe you're a little overboard on some stuff, right? I can relate to this because I remember like becoming a very young Christian and for me, hip-hop was everything, right? Hip-hop was my everything. So if someone was playing secular music or non-Christian hip-hop around me a couple years into my faith, I'd be like, ah! You know what I mean? Like I felt defiled because it represented so much of my old life. Now... Now, I'm not saying I'd put on, like, Two Live Crew and play it or something like that, but it's like, it doesn't, you know, as the term goes, just hits a little different now, right? I was in a part of my faith where I was very young, immature, and I'll be honest with you, there's a part of me that was kind of dogmatic, and I was a little obnoxious about that stuff. And as I grew over time, I realized music is just like people. Some people are very negative and, and, and unchristlike, and some people are just kind of somewhere in the middle, and... And some people push me to go deeper with my walk with Christ. And music was just the same. So it wasn't going to taint me or defile me or make me less holy because someone was playing some secular rap song around me. Right? Anyway, I'm going to jump off. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, what your thoughts are, I will post this. Yeah, someone said, that's like the clean and unclean food. They didn't eat pork back in the Bible because God... I can't remember the rest of it. Anyway, you guys are wonderful. Love y'all. Please go check out my new book, kj52book.com. Please support if you can. Hope you guys have a great, incredible day. Love y'all. God bless.